I'm reading chapter 10 of At the Bangles House. How the Bangles do it. What would you like to have for dinner, Billy? asked Mother Bangle. Whenever Daddy Bangle had his business friends over, Mother would ask him what he'd like served, and he always said, Roast beef and apple pie with cheese. Billy's friend Freddy was coming over the next night for dinner and to spend the night. Billy knew just what he wanted to eat. Hamburgers and French fried potatoes. Billy was sitting in the kitchen doing his homework and his mother was frosting some cupcakes. She opened a cupboard door and Billy spied the box of colored ice cream cones and it gave him an idea. And let's have ice cream cones for dessert. The next evening at dinner, the Bengals and their guest ate all the hamburgers and French fried potatoes and ice cream they could hold. Mother had made faces on the ice cream sliced red cherry for the mouth, and raisins for the nose and eyes. As soon as they were through eating, Joey, only four years old, slid down from his chair. "'Where are you going, Joey?' asked Daddy Bangle. "'To get the Bible and Stoley book,' replied Joey. He was having trouble with his R's, so it was Stoley book instead of story book. "'Family devotions, dry old things!' said Freddy to himself. They had them every night at his house, and he just hated them. He had wanted to get away from the table and play. Shall we say our week's verse together tonight? asked Daddy Bangle. Daddy was opening the Bible to the verse, 1 Corinthians thirteen four. He handed the Bible to Freddy, saying, You can read it along with us, Freddy. All the Bangles, even little Joey, knew the verse. So they all and Freddy said together, Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Now let's see, said Daddy. Last night we prayed for the Donaldsons in South America, didn't we? You see, Freddy, we have our missionary map right here on the wall. Isn't Mother Bangle good to let us clutter up her nice dining room with a missionary map? Well, we have pictures of our missionaries in the different countries pasted on the map. Each day we remember a certain country. This is Friday, and that's our night for what place, Patty? Africa, replied Patty. Do you want to show us where Africa is on the map, Patty, and tell us whose pictures are pasted on different stations? questioned Daddy Bangle. Patty Bangle arose and went to the map promptly. This is Linda Paul. She's in Belgian Congo. And Mr. and Mrs. Myers and Cherry Lee and Jimmy and their new little baby are here too. And way down here, there's a picture of Mr. Sanders. And in French West Africa, we pray for the Blackwells. And we don't want to forget to pray for the lepers in the hospital at Nairobi, and also for the money for those two candidates, Mr. and Mrs. Balford, who are ready to sail when their support comes in, said Mother Bangle. Billy, you pray for our missionaries tonight, said Daddy. And Mother, you pray for our family and friends and any other needs you might know of. So Billy and Mother Bangle prayed for definite persons by name. Boy, this is keen, thought Freddy. My dad never lets any of us pray. He just prays that God will touch our lips from off the altar and things like that. I like this kind of praying. Mother Bengal asked God's blessing upon her family, and Freddy was startled to hear her say, And do bless our guest Freddy in a special way. Make him a true soldier of the Lord Jesus at home, at school, and at play. He liked to have his name mentioned in prayer. He had never heard anybody really say his name before when they prayed. After they had prayed, Daddy took the Bible story book and said, We'll see if you have your thinking caps on tonight. I'm going to read you a Bible story. And where the name of the important character is, I'll say blank. See how many of you can guess who it is by the time I've finished reading the story. Blank took a long trip. She didn't ride in an automobile. She didn't ride on a train. She didn't ride in an airplane. 
She didn't ride in a boat, and she didn't walk. Blank rode to King Solomon's country on the back of a big camel. Cloppity clop, 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 went the camel. It was a bumpy ride. Many people had told Blank about Solomon. Some said, King Solomon is the richest man in the world. He has lots of silver and gold. He has great big palaces. He has a beautiful church. Others said, King Solomon is the smartest man in the whole world. He knows more than anybody else. I'd like to see such a rich king, said Blank. I'd like to see the smartest man in the world. So Blank and her servants went to see Solomon. They took him a lot of presents gold and spice and everything nice. King Solomon was glad to see Blank. He was nice to her. He showed her his gold and silver. He showed her his palaces. He showed her his church. Oh, said Blank, Solomon is richer than the people said he was. Blank asked Solomon many hard questions. He told her the right answers to all of them. Blank said, King Solomon is smarter than the people said he was. God had made King Solomon rich. God had made King Solomon the wisest man in the world. Daddy Bangle looked at those at the table with a twinkle in his eye. Freddy, you have an intelligent gleam in your eye. I believe you know who Blank is. The Queen of Sheba, answered Freddy. Is that right, Billy? asked Daddy. Sure is, answered Billy. He was proud that his friend Freddie knew the answer. The Bible story was ended. Mom, if we don't pound too hard, may we work on that stool I'm making? asked Billy. For an hour or so, replied Mother. Freddie and Billy pushed their chairs back from the table and started for the basement. But Freddie had forgotten something, so he went back and said, Thank you, Mrs. Bangle, for the nice dinner. You're welcome, Freddy, said Mother Bangle, and she gave him one of her sweet Mother Bangleish smiles. She was thinking to herself, I hope Patty and Billy see how nice it is for a boy to thank his hostess for a meal. Billy and Freddy had worked for a few minutes on the stool when Freddy spoke up. I wouldn't mind our family devotions if they were like yours, but at our house my dad does all the reading and all the praying, and oh boy does he pick out the long chapters in the Bible, and, and does he use the big words when he prays. I wish he'd let me read or pray once in a while like you kids do. Maybe he would if you asked him, said Billy. Maybe your dad doesn't know you'd like to read and pray sometimes. I'm going to ask him, said Freddy, and he did. The next day, Billy was over at Freddy's house when he said to his father, Dad, over at the Bengals, they have a big map of the world on the wall with missionaries' pictures on it, and they take turns reading the Bible and praying. It's keen. What are you talking about, Freddy? questioned his father. The Bengals family devotions. They're fun. Yeah, but they didn't used to be, said Billy. Patty and Joey and I used to squirm and pinch each other under the table and everything. Daddy used to have to stop reading and scold us and sometimes send Patty or me or both of us upstairs. What happened to change it? asked Freddy's father. Billy forgot what Freddy had said about his dad reading long chapters and praying with big words, so he blurted out, Ah, Dad was reading big, long chapters in the Bible and praying big, long prayers that we couldn't understand. Then my Aunt Mildred came to visit us. She's Dad's oldest sister, and she treats Dad just like he was a boy. One night, I didn't behave during devotions, and Dad scolded me and sent me upstairs. Mom was embarrassed in front of Aunt Mill, and she started to cry, then got up and went to the kitchen. Joey cried because Mom did, so the family couldn't have any devotions that night. Dad started upstairs to talk to me, and Aunt Mill followed. I heard them talking real low on the stairs. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but Aunt Mill was doing most of the talking. I was lying with my face buried when Dad came into the room. I wasn't crying because I was too mad inside to cry. I didn't like family devotions, and I wished I'd had nerve enough to tell my dad. Then I heard Dad say, Billy, 
I think I owe you an apology. Boy, I looked up. Dad wasn't going to scold me. Your Aunt Mill has been talking to me like a Dutch uncle, said my dad, as she used to do when I was a boy like you. She thinks we should have simpler family devotions, something that you and Patty and Joey can understand and have a part in. She said it would be better if your mother and I read the long chapters and said the long prayers in our room. And do you know, I believe she's right. Next day, I went downtown with Aunt Mill, and we bought a great big map of the world, and our preacher gave us some pictures of the missionaries our church is interested in. We pasted their pictures on the countries where they preach, and boy, have we learned lots of geography and things. Joey's just four years old, and he knows the names of lots of countries. Patty and I read what we want to in the Bible. My dad likes it this way better, too. He says it's nice for him and Mom to read the Bible and pray together in their room when he doesn't have to be a strict dis uh, dis uh, something it's a big word disciplinarian said Freddie's father all of a sudden Billy realized that he had made a big long speech maybe the longest one he had ever made in his life to a grown up then all of a sudden, he remembered that Freddy's dad read big, long scripture portions and did all the praying, and Billy's face got red, and he started to stammer. But you can read long chapters if you want to. Don't be embarrassed, Billy. I can take it, said Freddy's father. I see exactly what you're driving at, and I'll just do a bit of confessing right here. I've been doing all my Bible reading at the table with our family. I didn't realize that my 11-year-old boy and the twins eight years old, also a three-year-old child, might not enjoy the same kind of reading and prayers. I owe you a debt of gratitude, my boy. Believe me, from this day on, family devotions in this house are going to be geared for the family and not for mother and father. Mother and I can pray and read in our room as you bangles do. Next week at prayer meeting, Freddie's father gave a testimony. He told what a help and blessing Billy Bangle had been. That's how it happened that Mother Bangle had to type off 20 copies of the list of stories she and Aunt Mill had picked out of the Bible that are good for children to read for their devotions, either with the family or when alone in their rooms. Some of them were an axe swims. Second Kings 6, verses 1 through 7. Daniel, the healthy boy, in Daniel 1. Walking and talking, in Luke 24, verses 13 through 35. And oh, so many, many more. The end. I hope you enjoyed listening to At the Bangles House.